Okay, well, we're going to go into another section and talk about what's known as confidence intervals. All right, now a confidence interval, many people get a little confused what a confidence interval is. Confidence intervals really are used um, to make a decision about the value of a parameter. Now, you have to understand what a parameter is, so a little quick review. A parameter is the true mean or proportion of a population. Of a population. So, for example, um, we do sampling to try to figure out and get a statistic. For example, I will get a sample and I'll get a statistic for the proportion. Well, what we want to know is how close is this statistic to the true population? All right, how confident are we that this statistic, all right, is um, close to the true population P? Because this is your stat, this is your population. And the same thing, sometimes we get a stat of the mean. And we want to know, okay, how close is this statistic to the true population of the mean? All right, and that's what we have right there. So we want to try to figure out how close is it to that true population. Now, um, the thing is, is that um, we are looking for confidence, okay, confidence. And sometimes you hear like we are 90% confidence, 100% confident. Well, how can you become 100% confident in anything? Well, for example, um, if I wanted to pick a number from 1 to 10, all right, 1 to 10, and you already guessed my number, all right, from 1 to 10. Okay, and I said, okay, um, pick a number, and you said nine. Well, how confident are you that this is nine? Well, give me a range of values, all right, a range of values um, that will you will give you confidence that the, whatever number you, whatever, <laughs> whatever number I pick um, would be the correct number. Well, um, if I pick nine, well, I don't know how confident I am, you know, because uh, it's from one to not, one to ten, and you may say, well, I'm one of 10 units, uh, one ahead, have a, a guess, so it's a 1 out of 10 chance of getting it right. Well, let's say I give you a range of values, and you can pick any range of values. Well, I think the number is going to be between 5 and 8. All right, 5 and 8. Well, how confident are you that you have numbers from 5 to 8? Well, I am confident. Well, since there is 5 to 8, that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, four numbers. Okay, so if I go four numbers, so four out of 10, I am all right, 40% confident that the number will be between here, okay? Um, what would you say right here? Well, if I would say, give me a range of numbers from um, 2 to um, two to 7, all right? If I go 2 to 7, well, I said, I think the number is between 2 and 7. Well, how confident are you? Well, I am, well, in this case, we have 40% confidence. If we have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, well, that would be 5 out of 10. I'm 5 out of 10. That means I'm 50% confident all right, I have a 50 percent chance that this actually will this will work out. Okay, well, let's say I go a little farther. All right, and I say I'm a really smart guy. I say I want to be 100 percent confident. 100 percent confident. So give me an interval where I would be 100 percent confident. Well, I know the number is between one and ten, so I'm going to take an interval between one and ten. I'm 100 percent confident because all the numbers are there, 10 out of 10. I'm 100 percent confident. All right, that. The true number that you picked, or I picked, would be between 1 and 10, because I know I only can pick a number between 1 and 10. So I'm 100% confident. So you can see, the larger the interval you have, the more confidence you have. The smaller the interval, all right, the smaller the interval, for example, if I just pick one number, and I just say, okay, it was, like I said, 9, well, how confident am I? Well, I'm 1 out of 10, all right, 1 out of 10, I'm 10% confident, that's going to be. So you can see, the larger the interval you get, all right, the larger percent, okay, that you have right there, okay, of confidence, all right, means the larger the interval. And so the question is, all right, why do we have confidence intervals? Because confidence intervals help us make decisions about the true value of the parameter. They give us an indication what the true mean or proportion of the population really is. We don't know what the exact population is, but we're given a range of values with a confidence all right, using probability, margin of error, and whatnot, um, that we know that, um, that statistically speaking, that the true population will be between these numbers, okay? Statistically speaking. But that doesn't guarantee that the number is, is between those numbers. It just gives us a percent or confidence interval, all right? And we're going to talk about what a level of confidence is in a little bit. 
um, that it's going to be between there. So how do we get this confidence interval? Okay, well, there are some things that we need, all right? There's something called a point estimator, all right? Um, there is then we're going to talk about what a margin of error is, and then how can we define this confidence interval. So hopefully right now you understand what a confidence interval is through my little example of um, guessing, all right, a little guessing of numbers right here, and where we can have our percentage of um, our range of values, all right, in which we have the true guess or the true population that we have. All right, so let's talk about this. So if we're going to talk about confidence intervals, there are some key things that you need to have in order to construct a confidence interval. The first thing is you need a point estimate. All right, you need a point estimate. So a point estimate is a statistic that provides a reasonable guess about the population parameter. All right, so um, this could be, like I said, you get a random sample and you get a statistic, all right, and you get a value right here, all right, of our, pop our, our proportion, and you could have right here of our mean. And these are our guesses for the population. All right, this is our stat, and this is our population. So a point estimate is a t statistic, okay, um, of either the uh, proportion or the mean of the population. And you usually re random samples to help us figure that out. Now, to construct the confidence interval, all right, well, we need two different things. So we take our point estimate, okay, so that's the statistic we have, and we add and subtract a margin of error. Okay, a margin of error. All right, so um, we take a middle ground. We say, okay, I want to be um, <clears throat> um, a certain value away from that. Okay, so if I had two, and I'm going to add two from there, from each of, either side, I'm going to plus or minus that margin of error. Okay, I'm comfortable having a margin of error of that amount. Okay, so I can be off by that much, and that would be our, um, and then we would have a confidence interval. Okay. Now, from here, um, how do we calculate this confidence interval? All right, A to B, whatever that may be. Well, a point estimate, it's really easy. If you have a confidence interval from A to B, okay? So if I went from 2 to 9, okay, 2 to 9, all right? Um, and that was some sort of confidence interval. Well, where is my point estimate? Well, my point estimate is actually the starting point, okay? The starting point. And the starting point, and actually that's my starting point, starting point okay and that starting point could once again be is our stat that's going to be a proportion or a mean and where is that starting point well the starting point is right in the middle all right right in the middle of our confidence interval so how do you figure out what that point estimate is well you're going to take your a value so i would take two plus nine and i would divide that by two so whatever my stat was that would give me my point estimate okay that would give my point estimate all right, and so then what we have right here, that would be 11 over 2, okay, so 5.5, okay? That would be my point estimate. Now, another thing is our margin of error. So what are we adding and subtracting from our point estimate? Well, really, that's the difference, all right? And it's the average difference between B and A, okay? So what we would take right here to find our margin of error, so what are we adding and subtracting to this point estimate to get from A to B? Well, all right. Um, so the margin of error would simply be, well, B would take a 9 minus 2 divided by 2. So we are adding from 5.5, all right? That would give us uh, 7 over 2, which would be 3.5. So I'm having 3.5 to 5.5 on both sides to get 2 and 9. And that's my margin of error. Now, the next thing is we need to construct or we'll interpret, all right, what a um, confidence interval is. Well, normally would say we are some sort of percentage confident and that's what we talked about before how confident um, are you that the interval from a to b will capture the true pr parameter okay the true parameter either proportion or mean of whatever you're looking for and that's the context now if you go back to our other thing we do this by using our probability okay we can use probability and we're going to talk about in other videos how we can figure out this probability all right, by using norms and whatnot. Um, but right here, that is where we're going to be confident. So we can say we are 40% confident that the interval from 5 to 8 will capture the true guessing or, my, or the true um, number um, that was guessed from 1 to 10. All right, and that's what we know. All right, um, and same thing here. We would say we could say that um, I am 50% confident um, that the, the true number that was guessed will be between 2 and 7, all right, 2 to 7, all right, 
And that's what we know. That is what a confidence interval is. It's a percentage of confidence that the interval that we find will capture the true all right, parameter of whatever we're doing. Now, the thing is, is that this is just a level, this is, this is a confidence interval. It does not guarantee that the population is between there because we still have a percentage that it won't actually be there. Okay, and then finally, the confidence goes <clears throat> gives plausible values. Okay, so whenever you're taking this, it could be um, all plausible values of that. So if we go back to my example, well, it could be five, six, seven, and eight. All right, those are all plausible values that I could have guessed. Okay, um, if I just had nine, I would have a ten percent chance again because it's just one number. Yes, nine is a plausible value that could have guessed because it's a number between one to ten. All right. Um, and all, all that and so on and so forth, okay? And so with that, <clears throat> that is what a confidence interval is. So hopefully this uh, little illustration explains well, and we're going to go through another problem um, to check your understanding on what a confidence interval is in just a little bit in the next video.